Here's your wrestling news for December 6, 2021. And your headlines for today include WWE 2K22's custom creations details revealed. Braun Strowman makes first indie wrestling appearance since WWE non-compete clause expired. Scarlett returns to action after WWE release. Jeff Hardy sent home from WWE live event. Update on Kyle O'Reilly's WWE NXT contract. Wrestler rushed to emergency room. WWE makes huge change to New Year's Eve SmackDown. WWE announces NXT New Year's Evil special. Why Austin Theory is getting segments with Vince McMahon. Big E engages in flag battle ahead of Iowa vs. Michigan Big Ten title game, and more. We're kicking off today with WWE 2K22, the company's next video game, which is coming to consoles over a year after the disastrous release of WWE 2K20. 2K22 will release in March next year as opposed to the original late 2021 release date, and this delay has been attributed to WWE's ever-changing roster in the wake of so many releases. We now know more about the creative features, as Smack Talks reports that WWE 2K22's Create a Superstar mode will feature almost 10,000 customizable components, as well as an upgraded online community creation section. The game will also feature over 5,000 new maneuvers to go with the 30,000 existing moves, which art producer Christian DM Farm has said have been retimed to make the gameplay smoother than ever. In a report from August, it was said that 2K22 feels like a wrestling fan's wrestling game, and with all these latest updates, perhaps there's still life left in WWE's gaming department after the disaster of 2K20. One name WWE game developers had to cut is Braun Strowman, who was released earlier this year, despite being one of the company's most prominent stars of the past few years. Since being released, he did make an appearance at Free the Narrative 2, but as far as live wrestling is concerned, the monster among men has kept pretty quiet. On social media, Strowman made it clear that he was working on his physique, and his impressive gains led to speculation he'd be joining Impact Wrestling. Scott Demore even said that Bound for Glory would be Braun for Glory, but when the show happened, Strowman was nowhere to be seen. In June, it was reported that Braun was asking for five figures for appearances at indie shows, which was quickly refuted by the man himself. Obviously, independent promotions can't pay the same that WWE was offering him, and five-figure deals will take quite the cut into the profits of the event. With that said, having a huge name like Strowman will cause more people to attend, and PW Insider, who were the first to report that Braun was asking for five figures per appearance, stood by the report, saying, Strowman's manager Nick Anticelli has quoted 20 to 25k for a three-hour appearance to multiple promoters that have reached out with their interest in Strowman in making appearances. Whatever the case may be, Strowman has finally wrestled his first post-WWE match in front of a crowd as he competed at the Great Lakes Championship event Blizzard Brawl. Teaming with EC3 to face Jake Something and Rohit Raju, it's interesting that both of Braun's opponents are Impact Wrestling roster members who could make another play to bring him on board. The match has been met with a positive response, as many in attendance were surprised to see Strowman's skills after months away from the ring. We have to wonder what Braun, now going by Adam Schur, was paid for the show, but it's worth noting that both he and EC3 donated the proceeds they made from their meet and greet to the victims of the terrible Waukesha Christmas Parade tragedy that occurred recently. After years in WWE, Strowman is now having to remake himself outside Vince McMahon's promotion, and only time will tell what comes next for the former Universal Champion after his return to the squared circle. Speaking of releases, Scarlett Bordeaux was cut from her NXT contracts last month, meaning she'd have to wait 30 days before she could compete elsewhere. Her non-compete has now expired, and the smoke show has wasted no time in getting back in the ring. Last weekend, MCW Pro Wrestling sent out a video where fans can see Scarlett in action for the first time since her release, and we can see her sliding into the ring just after King McBride and delivering a low blow. Bordeaux then hits an impressive Canadian destroyer before donning the sunglasses previously worn by McBride. This earned a huge pop from the crowd, as Bordeaux's popularity continues to soar since being released. In a tweet just 24 hours after she was let go, Scarlett said she had organized a magazine cover deal and was discussing potential clothing lines, which is in addition to her rapidly filling calendar of dates for promotions. 
The former WWE superstar has even said that she plans to start an OnlyFans in January, and we imagine Bordeaux will continue to get more and more popular after years of being solely a manager in WWE. Now, Jeff Hardy is a veteran of wrestling, having competed both under his own name and Willow over the years. Hardy has overcome a lot of personal demons to earn the respect of fans, but something odd happened at a recent live event. Appearing at Edinburgh, Texas, Hardy teamed with Xavier Woods and Drew McIntyre against the Bloodline, or at least that was the plan, as PW Insider reported. Hardy teamed with Xavier Woods and Drew McIntyre against the Bloodline last night in Edinburgh, Texas for the main event of that Super Show live event. Hardy spent most of the match inside the ring being worked over by Roman Reigns and the Usos and apparently becoming more sluggish as the match continues. Once he made a hot tag to McIntyre, Hardy disappeared into the crowd, followed by security, and didn't return to the ring for the post-match celebration with his partners. For the next show in Corpus Christi, Texas, Hardy wasn't there at all and was replaced in the six-man main event by Raw's Rey Mysterio. Hardy's last match was on the November 26th SmackDown, where he teamed with McIntyre to defeat Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss, continuing his wave of momentum since being drafted to Team Blue. While it's not clear what happened to him, Hardy might be dealing with a potential case of injury or health problems, and whatever kept him from the Corpus Christi show, we're wishing him the best. Last month, we reported on Kyle O'Reilly, whose contract with NXT is set to expire in December. As a mainstay of NXT, thanks to being part of the Undisputed Era, losing O'Reilly would be a huge hit for NXT, as the former tag champion has survived the rebrand into NXT 2.0, and more recently has been teaming with newcomer Von Wagner. We now have an update on O'Reilly's contract, as PW Insider reports that the day his contract expires is arriving this week, and if he doesn't re-sign, he'll be gone from WWE by this Sunday. Though it's to be determined if Kyle will re-sign with WWE, it may be an enticing idea to join his former stablemates Adam Cole and Bobby Fish in AEW, as Fish and Cole have been teaming together on AEW TV. Much like O'Reilly, Johnny Gargano's contract is set to expire this week, and should he not re-sign, his last day will be on December 10th. Losing two major names of NXT will be devastating for the paint-splattered brand and something WWE will be hoping to avoid, but after O'Reilly and Wagner failed to take the NXT Tag Team titles from Imperium at War Games, it seems that the Undisputed Era alumni's days with WWE are coming to an end. Last weekend, NWA Hard Times 2 took place, and the finish of the show was an all-out war. After NWA world champion Trevor Murdoch retained his title against Mike Knox, the champ was ambushed by Knox and Matt Cardona, only to be saved by Elijah Burke. Unfortunately, this segment didn't go as planned, as when Burke was thrown into the steps at ringside, he went limp and was later transported to a hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. PW Insider reports that after the step spot, Burke remained down as multiple officials as well as Billy Corrigan checked on him, and the former WWE superstar hadn't recovered by the time the show finished and fans were leaving. An ambulance rushed Burke to the nearest medical facility where he was examined the morning after the show with x-rays and additional tests. There's currently no word on what happened to him, but we're hoping for the best for Elijah Burke, and we'll continue to follow this sad story for any further updates. Back to WWE, as this year, New Year's Eve falls on a Friday, but there won't be a live episode of SmackDown for fans to tune into on Fox. On the latest edition of Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that WWE will not be taping a live show, and that the original show slated to take place in Charlotte, North Carolina, has been cancelled. The original plan was for the show to happen live in Charlotte, but then Fox decided that they wanted the time slot to focus on the New Year's Eve celebrations and moved SmackDown to FS1. Knowing that the ratings would be poor on FS1, WWE decided to not do a live show, and instead the final SmackDown of 2021 will be a year in review, highlighting the best moments and matches of the blue brand over the past 12 months. The decision to scrap the standard SmackDown was reportedly made by Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn, and Nick Khan, and it won't just be New Year's that has been changed. For the Christmas Eve SmackDown, that show will be a pre-taped episode, which means WWE will be filming back-to-back -back SmackDowns on December 17th, as fans in Rosemont, Illinois will certainly get their money's worth later this month. SmackDown isn't the only show getting a New Year's special, as NXT War Games marked the first major show in the post-Triple H TakeOver era, and closed out with the paint-splattered brand promoting its next major event. 
On January 4th, NXT 2.0 will host New Year's Evil on Tuesday night, and while no matches have been announced yet, we expect a stacked card for the first NXT of 2022. Over to Raw now as Austin Theory has quickly rose up the ranks since returning to the red brand in October's draft and has earned special attention from Vince McMahon. At just 24 years old, Theory is benefiting greatly from WWE's new focus on youth and many are already calling him a future WWE champion. It appears Theory's age isn't the only thing working in his favor, as in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer explained why Theory is getting so much TV time as of late. Meltzer explained that Theory's WWE title opportunity against Big E was seen as a hit by the company and was reportedly especially popular with teenagers who WWE hoped to mold into lifelong fans. That's why Theory has received even more TV time over the past few weeks, and although he came up short against the WWE Champion during their match, it appears to just be a matter of time before the young superstar holds championship gold. And we're ending today with WWE Champion Big E, who's been all over the media since winning the title, including helping to hype Deontay Wilder up for his fight against Tyson Fury. The champ was also on hand to pump up Sean Porter for his match against Terrence Crawford, and now he's taken his energy and charisma to the Big Ten Championship game between Iowa and Michigan. When NFL Hall of Famer Charles Woodson, a Heisman Trophy winning defensive back at Michigan, was fieldside waving the flag of Michigan, Big E fired back with some flag waving of his own as a former Iowa defensive tackle. The WWE Champion had all the faith in his Iowa Hawkeyes to win, but that didn't come to be as Michigan crushed Iowa 42-3 to win the Big Ten. Big E's track record as a hype man isn't great, as Wilder, Porter, and now Iowa have all lost their respective matches, and while teams and boxers may see the reigning WWE Champion as bad luck, there's no denying his enthusiasm. Well guys, that's our news for today, please share your comments below! Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.